hello and welcome to a quick introduction on my Altair 8800 clone. So this is designed to look and function exactly like an original Altair 8800. The biggest difference is instead of being made up of a large number of large circuit boards, this is essentially an emulator running on a very small set of boards. The form factor is built to look exactly like an Altair 8800 from the outside including all the dimensions, but the interior is mostly empty due to running on modern hardware. The Altair 8800 clone is designed to emulate a 8800 with 64K of RAM, 16K of ROM. It has two serial ports in the rear as well as one cassette port. The second serial port can also be used as a line printer port. It also has support for up to three virtual floppies that you can swap in and out using a control program. So not only does this emulate the Altair 8800, but you can connect it to an external computer and emulate in-out things like paper tape readers, floppy drives, hard drives. So this allows for a lot of flexibility without necessarily having to deal with uh, antiquated or hard to find equipment. Next, we will go over what the switches and indicator LEDs mean across the board, starting from the bottom and working our way up. So first and most obvious is the on-off switch, which turns the machine on and off. Next is the stop-run switch. This either stops or runs the program that is currently in memory. Next is single step. This allows you to step through the program that you have in memory one address at a time. Uh, this is a great way to aid in debugging issues that you might have in your programs. Next is the examine, examine next switch. So after you have set the address switches to a particular address, you can hit examine to see what data is stored in that address. Then to get to the next address, instead of having to change the address toggles and hit examine again, you can hit examine next to increment to the next address. And you can do this as an easy way to look at the state of memory across a range without having to update the address switches with each change. Next is the deposit deposit next. This functions similar to the examine examine next, but the difference is instead of being used to look at what's in ad address, this is used to deposit data into an address. So on deposit, it will deposit the data into the current address. On deposit next, it will deposit that data into the next address. Next up is the reset clear. Reset sets the program counter back to zero. So that puts it back to address number zero for starting a program. The clear sends a clear signal to external input output devices. Next is the protect unprotect switch. This sets memory to either be protected from changes or unprotected. Then finally there are two aux switches. These are provided so that on the original you could basically wire in your own boards. Uh, on the clone you could also theoretically use it for putting in your own electronics and wiring them into those two switches. Next up is the address data switches. So there's a bank of 16 switches. When being used in addressing mode, it uses the full 16 switches because there is a 16-bit uh, memory bus for addressing. When used for setting data, it only uses the first eight switches. Moving up to the indicator LEDs, we have a wait LED. This tells us if the CPU is currently waiting. We have a hold acknowledge that tells us that the CPU is acknowledged to hold. The next 16 LEDs tell us the address we're currently on. So even as the program is running, these will indicate the address that the program is currently running from. The next row contains the majority of our status switches. So we have the interrupt E that tells us that an interrupt has occurred, the protect LED that tells us whether the memory is protected or not. We have the 
memory that tells us whether the bus contains a memory address. The input tells us if the bus contains an input address to let us know that we're getting data from an input device. M1 tells us that we're at the first machine cycle of an instruction. So some instructions require multiple cycles. This tells us we're on the first cycle of that instruction. The output tells us that we have an output device set as the address that we're sending data to. The halt acknowledge tells us that we've acknowledged a halt command. The stack tells us that we have put the stack pointer onto the bus. The write operation tells us that we're performing a write to memory. And then the interrupt acknowledge tells us that we've acknowledged an interrupt. And then finally, we have the data. This tells us the data that is in the address that's being displayed by the address lines. So that is it for the interface switches and the indicator LEDs. Next, we will toggle in a game called Kill the Bit, just to show you what it looks like to set up a program. So first, we start by turning it on. Uh, when it initially turned on, the Altair could have random data, it could have data left over from the last time. So what we need to do is clear out everything that is currently in memory so that we can start from a clean slate. The way that's done on the Altair clone is to set stop and then toggle the reset switch. And so that set us to memory address zero and it is cleared out most of the data in the system. Now since we are on memory address zero, we don't need to do anything with the address switches or go to examine to get to the address we're wanting to start from because the program does start from address zero. Now we start toggling in the program. So this can be a somewhat slow process. So for the first address, we set 41. Then we deposit it, and then clear for the next. And so the next two are actually zeros. So we deposit to address one, address two, Now when you are toggling in a program, the programs are usually denoted in octal, and that's because it's easier normally for someone to use three fingers to toggle three switches instead of trying to do four that hexadecimal would require. So a number like 333 would look like that for entering on the switches. And as you do more and more toggling, you'll get quicker at setting the switches to the correct numbers. And now we hit reset to return to zero. And now at this point, we can use our indicator lights and the examine next to step through the program and confirm that we've entered everything correctly.
Okay. Everything appears to be correct. And so now we are ready to run. If everything is entered correctly, this game will produce a light that runs across the addresses. And then we will attempt to use the switches to kill the bit. And that would be it. I will reset it. And this game, if you miss, you end up adding bits. There's also ways to adjust the speed at which the bit runs across so that you can make it harder or easier by adjusting one of the values in the addressing. And that is the Altair 8800 clone and killed the bit. It's a fairly simple game, but a lot of fun to toggle in a program and actually see something running. Thank you.